up guys it's your boy barca boy 103 today we're gonna be reacting to the barcelona news over the past 24 hours not that much news actually in terms of general topics over the past 24 hours very little to discuss but the two main topics are so so big that i had to make a video about it firstly of course on the jules Kunde saga it's been all over the place, man. Women were not in the race. Women were in the race. He's going to come. He's not going to come. He's this. He's that. He's there. He's there. It's all over the place. What I will do, though, is give you guys a full rundown and analysis on the you know on the news over the past 24 hours and give you guys the current status on Jules Kunde joining Barcelona. But his alternative options now are becoming more and more clear. The two main names, firstly, the real main one, the confirmed plan B, if you don't sign Kunde, is Indigo Martinez, the club have already contacted the player who will be a free agent next summer and Athletic Bilbao to see his price and if the deal is possible this summer and also on Pau Torres as well. They have not contacted Villarreal Barcelona but they have contacted Pau Torres' entourage to see if he would be you know, in a move in a favor to join Barcelona this summer, see his wages, what he wants but Barcelona are making movements on the backup options for Jules Kunde, but along with center backs, the club want to also sign a new right back this summer in Cesar Aspedaqueta. But his manager Thomas Tuchel has been speaking to the media over the past 24 hours and has been saying that I do not like Barcelona, their transfer activity has really annoyed me, and I may not give them what they want, and also don't want to give what Aspedaqueta wants as well, completely locking Aspedaqueta at Chelsea. But again, the club are still confident they can get that deal over the line. But Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea will make that operation very, very difficult. And finally, we do have a big update on Barcelona planning a third economic lever. They want to activate that before the end of this month to help the club register new players and new signings as well. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get to 300 likes this video. It'll be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. And the first player that we have been linked with is, of course, the number one target and priority signing for Barcelona currently in the transfer window, Jules Conde. Now, over the past 24 hours, it's been very, very a massive roller coaster for his saga. I'm gonna go through it quickly and give you guys the latest updates. So, firstly, yesterday in the morning, it was breaking in the Barcelona media that Jules Conde to Barcelona is officially off. Everyone came out saying it. The news actually broke from Juan Martin on the the road from Relivo. They came out saying that Barcelona sources practically give up on Jules Kunde. They believe he'll sign for Chelsea in the coming hours yesterday. Also, Hina Kudes from Cope and Andrea Albernes from Alcantasair. They came out saying the same thing as well, relatively around the same time as well. Even for Brizzi Romano, he came out saying that Barcelona feel that Chelsea's proposal for Jules Kunde is too important to be matched. 55 million pounds, around about I think 64 to 63 million euros offer from Chelsea and the player will sign until 2027 with a salary of 9 or 10 million euros per season. Deal is at the final stages. And then the Chelsea sources came out, Matt Law, Nathan Gidson, Ben Jacob, they all came out saying the deal is done, it will be signed in the next few hours. But late last night, there was a big bomb in the Barcelona media. As I told you guys from before, Heine Codes also came out saying the deal is also off, it's not going to happen. But then she broke the news last night saying that Barcelona are reassessing the Jules Kunde operation. They are reluctant to rule him out. Yesterday, the operation seemed very difficult, but the situation has change Barcelona are now considering making an offer things are happening things are moving fast in the last few hours now you're thinking okay maybe we have some hope and the floodgates started opening again Andre Albanis from Candacero also came out earlier in the day saying the deals ruled out he came out saying the important people of Barcelona are sure that things can still happen with Jules Kunde. there has been movement in the last hours nothing can be ruled out Cat Radio came out saying that Jules Kunde still wants to play for Barcelona the club continues to work despite the complicated situation and remain hopeful as well and despite the difficulty of the operations coming in from goal now Barcelona have never completely ruled out the Jules Kunde operation so essentially He's closer to Chelsea, but Barcelona are still in the race. They're still trying to persuade him into joining the club this summer. Again, I've said this a thousand times, I'll say it again. 
If both teams offer a contract on the table, he's taking the Barcelona one every single day of the week. Right now, there's no Barcelona contract on the table, but Barcelona do want to make that offer. Apparently, this big uh, remontada is because of Xavi. Xavi is pushing the board to sign Jules Conde. Now, also, Edu Polo from Mundo Portivo came out saying that it is difficult, but Barcelona have not completely ruled out the Jules Conde operation. The club continues to work and to try and sign Xavi's priority in the defense. Defense. Barcelona trusts Kunde's word. The key now lies in Kunde staying firm and waiting for Barcelona. So again, Barcelona are betting on the fact that Jules Kunde wants to play for the club so much he will take some time, be patient in that uh, you know Barcelona making their offer. I would say by the end of this weekend, if he's not a Chelsea player, I think Barcelona are fully in it. I think Chelsea want to get this done as soon as possible. They know that Barcelona are a big threat. They know the longer this deal goes on, the longer it's in Barcelona's favor. Because Queen is probably thinking, oh, by the way, you another week. Might as well wait an extra couple of days. It'll get to that point sooner rather than later. But of course, the biggest source and best source in Barcelona has also spoken on the situation, Gerard Romero. He came out yesterday morning saying that it's complicated. We need to sell players to get him in, but it's not completely ruled out. And then last night, he was speaking in his live stream and he came out saying that Cunha to Barcelona is no longer impossible but that doesn't mean it will happen the club has again asked the player to have patience player have to be sold and leave before they can sign Jules Kunde of course on Barcelona's part also Barcelona is relying heavily on the player's will otherwise the deal can be complicated the fact that Kunde is still with Sevilla in Portugal is very significant and again Kunde keeps asking his agent to wait for the offer from Barcelona and then Helena Codes from Cope joined Gerard de Mero's live stream and she came out saying that yesterday Barcelona told us that Kunde was almost impossible but today in the morning of course nothing is 100% ruled out it's complicated but still possible before Sevilla saw Jules Kunde at 100% to Chelsea but that percentage has now lowered she also came out saying that Dembele has also spoken to Kunde and he may be keen convincing the player for the possible arrival at Barcelona so maybe agent Dembele is coming in clutch here I think this operation is just it's all over the place man I do I think it's gonna happen I'm not quite too sure I think the reality is that the operation is too tough too early to call it's Again, if this, do, if this doesn't get done by the end of this weekend, I'll be more confident. But of course, today is Saturday. You have the whole day Sunday. I think there's still a lot of opportunity for Chelsea to get this deal over the line. They're definitely the favorites. They have almost agreed a fee with the Sevilla. Kunde, again, is open to going to the Chelsea as well. But he prefers Barcelona. I think that's a fact now. I think that's a given. The question now is, will he wait? I think he'll give Barcelona maybe a couple of days. If he does wait... We'll have to wait and see. I think once you hear reports saying that uh, that uh, Kunde has left the camp in uh, Portugal for Sevilla and he's coming towards back to Sevilla or back to London or back to Barcelona or wherever maybe, I think once he leaves that camp, it's over. But as long as he's still in the camp for the preseason for Sevilla, anything is possible. And I also believe that until Chelsea has signed the papers, I think Barcelona can sweep in at any time. The club won him. We've been eyeing him now for months. He's the only top center back that's a good price that's left on the market. Of course, the lit left, Kulabali left. There's no one else really that you, that would you know come in and make the defense of Barcelona very very strong for a good price this summer anyway. So, away see on Jose Conde. I think the club will go all in. Well, I don't think. I hope the club will go in all in for him in the next couple of days. But again. The money is there. Second so economic lever, of course, has been activated. I don't know why Barcelona are so slow in their transfers. We're always slow for everything, man. It pisses me off. We get stuff done. Credit to the board, right? They get stuff done. You know, the levers, all this other stuff. But they do it last second every single time. Same with Lewandowski. Remember, we signed him before the Saturday deadline for the team being presented. Uh, presented, uh, presented like their Bayern Munich in the stadium. The team gets presented. We signed him what Thursday night, Friday morning ish. Like, come on, make it. It's always last second, so we'll wait and see until again I see a here we go from uh, from Bits Romano to Chelsea for Kunde. I think any can, can anything can happen, but no doubt, hundred percent at the moment, could Chelsea is definitely win the race for Jules Kunde. The question now is. Can Barcelona do a yet another hijack operation? Now, with the Jules Kunde operation at the current moment looking very, very difficult and complicated to complete, the club still want to sign another center back this summer, and they're now looking at the alternatives for the Jules Kunde deal. One of them is Pau Torres. This has not been confirmed by a lot of people in the Barcelona media. News broke from Ben Aid. He came out saying that Pau Torres wishes to play 
for Barcelona. Pau Torres agreed with Villarreal to negotiate in the event that an offer came in from a major club. Apparently, uh, Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo TV also confirmed this. Jose Alvarez from Anchigo TV confirmed this as well, saying the price will be around 40 to 50 million euros. And then we got the big confirmation from Gerard Romero. He came out saying that Barcelona have contacted Pau Torres' camp in the last few hours. The club wants to keep all options open in case the Kunde deal fails or comes to an end. For 40 million euros, 50 million euros, is Pau Torres worth it? I mean, I'm not quite too sure. I think if we're going to go for a Spanish center back, I would go for him. We'll talk about the other one in the next minute or so. But I think 50 million euros for Pau Torres is a big gamble. I think 30, it's a good deal. You can sell him on maybe for 20 if he flops. You only take, you know, 10 million fee borrow thing. I think for 50, 40, it's a bit too much. I think Villarreal had the right to demand for that. He's a great center back. He's in demand, of course. Center back market is through the roof, but... He's not really one that excites me like a Jules Kunde. That's what, I, what I'm trying to get at. He doesn't come in. He doesn't excite me. The fact that oh, our defense is solid now. It's going to be so strong. I think Pau Torres is a good uh, center back. He has good potential, but still has some question marks around him. So we'll wait and see. Again, he's one of the names on that big long list of backups. You have Gervadio, you have William Saliba, Ibanez, Grenier, and Pau Torres has joined that list as well. So we'll wait and see. But again, it all depends on the Kunde operation if that fails. Again, but Barcelona had made contact with his agent and with his entourage over the past few hours to inquire about a move this summer. But the center back, who without a doubt is the plan B alternative backup option to Jules Conde this summer is Indigo Martinez. Go look at my last video. What did I say when that list came out? I think Barcelona on that list will go for Indigo Martinez if Conde does not arrive. I'm, I'm a freaking visionary man. I can read this club like a book. Anyways, after the news came out yesterday uh, in the morning that Conde's deal has completely collapsed and not happened after that remontada that came out last night. During that time, the news actually broke from the Athletic Club or Bilbao media. They broke that, that Barcelona Sporting Director Mateo Ayman has called the new president of Athletic Club to negotiate for the defender Inigo Martinez, who has one year remaining on his contract. And then Alfred Martinez from Sport, who is very, very close to Inigo Martinez, he came out saying that a month ago, Inigo Martinez was impossible. But after not being able to sign Jules Conde, the option is now reactivated also keep in mind he is left footed but negotiation with athletic club is very difficult and very tough he has an 80 million euro release clause and his contract ends in 2023 so next summer he'll be a free agent and then Gerard Romero came out saying that Barcelona and Mateo Hayeman have an agreement for Indigo Martinez to arrive as a free agent next summer as a PK replacement who's 99% gonna be leaving the club next summer or retiring or whatever he's gonna do Look, I think Inigo Martinez is a good center back. Not great, not fantastic, not excellent. He's a good center back. Give you those Pepe vibes. Very, very aggressive on the pitch. Every time he faces him, he puts in the shift. He's 31 years old, man. Like, come on. We keep we, we've already signed Lewandowski, who's 34, man. Like, I'm I'm i I'm not really a fan of signing players in their mid 30s, pretty much. You can say early 30s, but it's pretty like 32 is basically mid 30s, in my opinion. And then again, the floodgates started rolling in. Relivo came out saying the Inigo Martinez is open to leaving Athletic Bilbao for Barcelona, activating their interest. I mean, obviously, Inigo Martinez's contract ends in 2023. If he does not renew, he'll leave as a free agent next summer when his contract expires. Uh, Jordi Hale from Sport came out saying there is a total agreement between Inigo Martinez and Barcelona on personal terms over a four year contract. After missing on Jose Conde, the club wants to prioritize him, but the most important part is agreeing a fee with Bilbao. So it looks like that Barcelona had him lined up as a free agent, but now when I get him earlier after the Kunde operation failed. The price. What's being rumored at the moment for the price is that his release cost 80 million euros, Bilbao wants 60 million euros, and they'll take it paid in two installments. So 30 million euros this summer and then 30 million euros next summer. <laughs> I'll pay 20 max. 60, I, I would rather not sign a center back use that money to terminate some contracts, save the rest, and go with Aruho and Christensen for the season, then sign Indigo Martinez for 60. I mean, I would not pay a dime or penny over 25 million for him, if we're gonna go for him. I personally think as a free agent, he's way more of an attractive option. I think next summer, you bring him in when PK leaves, you have Indigo Martinez, 
Christensen, um, Arujo, Eric Garcia, and then our new top center back, whoever it may be. I think that would be a great, you know, option in the, in the competition for that center back position. You, then you can make a decision on Eric Garcia. If you're not doing too good, maybe you can loan him out. But I think it's it's not good. It's not, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? Bill Bell will make it tough. They don't want to sell him. They think he's an important player. Keep in mind, by the way, Bill Bell's new uh, manager is Ernesto Valverde. When he was at Barcelona, he was begging, and I mean begging for Indigo Martinez. I think it was what? In the summer of 2017, 2018, I don't remember, but he was begging the club to sign him, and in the end, they didn't. And I don't think he'll be open to letting him go, as you know, he's a big fan of the player as well. Now, Fan Martinez also came out saying that Athletic Bilbao does not want to part ways with Inigo Martinez. The player will have to press for the move to make it possible, but Barcelona would not want to invest much consideration in his age and constructional situation as well. More reports coming in from Athletic Bilbao press saying that Athletic Bilbao president does not want to sell Inigo Martinez and is trying to shield the center back by strong interest from Barcelona. And then finally, Edo Polo from Deportivo came out saying that if Jules Kunde ends up joining Chelsea, Barcelona have already activated the plan B option by contacting Inigo Martinez and it looks like plan C is Pau Torres at the moment according to Gerard Romero. Xavi's priority is still Jules Koundé and the club is still trying to sign him. Xavi's priority but Xavi's priority is still Jules Koundé and the club is still trying to sign him despite the complication. So Okay, if we don't sign Conde, who are we going to get? I think Indigo Martinez is definitely up there. Again, you could say Spanish bias. Probably not wrong. You're looking at the next option is Indigo Martinez and Pau Torres, both Spanish. But with Indigo Martinez, you're basically getting a veteran in for, you know, two years to just do a job and then leave. Basically, Lewandowski at center back, but not as high quality. I think Indigo Martinez is good, though. I'm not saying he's trash. I think he's a good, that's a good center back. Again, give me those Pepe vibes. Very, very aggressive in the defense. I like that in the center back as well. But he's a couple of years younger. I'd be all over this. Well, not all over it. I'd be way more interested, but... At 32, you're coming to the end of your career. You got like one or two years left. We'll wait and see. I think next summer as a free agent is more attractive. We may not even end up signing him as a free agent next summer, but I think right now maybe the club is just telling us like, look, if we don't get Kunde, we're looking at Indigo Martinez and Pau Torres. No real advancements have been made, but we'll wait and see. We'll think about it more if the Kunde operation failed. But it looks like Indigo Martinez. Well, it doesn't look like it's pretty much confirmed that Indigo Martinez is the backup option if the Kunde operation does end up failing. Now, along with a center back, the club are also looking for a new right back this summer to compete with Dets and also provide cover for Dets and Sergio Roberto as well. And the main name since January 2022 has been Cesar Espinacueta. We don't have any updates on his transfer, but we're still hearing that the deal is kind of complicated and waiting for the Jules Kunde operation and saga to end. But Thomas Tuchel, the manager of Chelsea, has spoken about the future of Espinacueta during preseason press conference. And he took pretty much, he just took some jabs at Barcelona. He came out saying, I'm not sure I want to give Aspilicueta what he wants. It is also about us and the comparison of how much we fought for Koulibaly. We have a Spanish international player, captain for Chelsea, and I see him at that level. But Barcelona don't see it at the level, so I'm not sure if I want to give Aspilicueta what he wants. Maybe I'm a little bit annoyed with Barcelona, but I do my best for Chelsea. He said that Aspilicueta, he does not like it. He, he said he understands it. It's tough for him because Barcelona is permanently on him. Couple things. One, he's basically confirmed that we want Aspilicueta and that Aspilicueta wants to leave. I mean, if you, if you think otherwise, you're dumb. Two, He's, he's pissed off that Barcelona won all the Chelsea targets. That's very clear. We went for Koulibaly. We had some interest on the concrete. We went for Rafinha. We're going for Jules Conde now. He's pissed off that everyone he wants, Barcelona trying to get that. Three, I think for 100% sure, if we get Jules Conde, ask for the quote that, well, not, well, not, I'm not going to say he's not going to come, but to go on Chelsea will make it very, 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 very difficult. Also, Jordan Romero came out saying this last night in his live stream saying that Obi Sanchez Kunde. I think Aspen de Quetta and Alonso operations will be damn near impossible, even more impossible than the Jules Kunde operation is at this moment. Who do I want? Aspen de Quetta or Alonso or Jules Kunde? Jules Kunde every single second of every single day in the year. I'm picking Jules Kunde. But Chavi doesn't want Aspen de Quetta. He wants him badly. But two cool things. Oh, Barcelona don't know the player. They think they, um, don't know how to use him. They take him back to another player, but he, we see him as a captain. We see him as a leader. There he'll just be another player. That's what he's trying to say, essentially. And that also, he's pissed off with Barcelona. Like, I'm a bit annoyed at Barcelona. <laughs> I mean, these came. These these quotes came out by the way before the news came out about Kunde or oh, coming back to Barcelona last night is still possible. So maybe Tuchel knows something that we don't, 
he also did, he refused to comment on Jules Conde as well during the press conference as well. I mean, it's all over the place. This Barcelona Chelsea battle this summer has been crazy. All we need now is a Champions League match, quarterfinals, round of 16, and that will completely destroy the fans in a motivational and I mean, in a motivational way. Like every time I would get linked with someone, Chelsea also interested. Chelsea in the race. Like even when you look at Lewandowski as well, they wanted him. Christensen from Chelsea. Did they want Kese? Probably they were interested, but it's all over the place. But Tuchel being a bit of a prick here, you know, taking Jazz at Barcelona, saying that, oh, I think they're annoying, their transfer window activity. I mean, suck on these nuts, I could give less of a crap. So, we'll wait and see. At the end of the day, no matter what, if we, we go bankrupt, Barcelona will be a bigger club than Chelsea. It's not even a comparison, not even close. And that's why Aspen Quinta wants to come to us. And I think Aspen Quinta coming in for two years. I'd rather think Aspen Quinta for two years than Indigo Martinez for two years. I think Aspen Quinta brings more. He brings some versatility, brings some leadership. I would rather not take him. But again, looks like Thomas Tuchel will make it difficult if he does not sign Jules Conde. So wait and see. I think again, I think Alon if we do, if we get Conde, I think Alonso is 100% done. But I think Aspen Quinta is still a big chance because Xavi really wants him. The club really wants him. The player really wants to move as well. But if we don't get Jules Kunde, I think they'll both join easily this summer. So we'll wait and see. But again, Thomas Tuchel, very uh, very angry at Barcelona's transfer activity this summer. And has given hints that he will not let Aspen Quinta go easily. Now the final topic that I wanted to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys some updates surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Mainly around the planning of a possible third economic lever being activated. Now yesterday or a couple nights ago, once the second economic lever was activated and officially announced, there were a lot of rumors coming out saying that Barcelona now are also planning a third lever. Sport came out saying that Barcelona are now working on a third lever, i.e. selling to around 20 to 30% of Barcelona studio for around 100 million euros. So not the entire 49.9% of Barcelona studios, just 20 to 30%. This is essentially to register all the new signings. They want to close it before the end of of this month so the club still feel like they need extra money after closing the first and second levers so the third one will be the Barcelona studio but again we have we have been given permission by the uh, coolies the Barcelona members to sell 49% of it but we're only choosing to sell around 20-30% of it just to get 100 million euros in to register the new players again Victor Novara from Coke came out confirming this as well he said look the first lever was to help Barcelona close the year off in profit second lever was to help end FFP restrictions and also give us a transfer budget third lever will help register players and signings as well so that's the plan now for barcelona it's a bit disappointing that we needed three levers i think that i thought that the first two would be enough to sign players register them and have no worries whatsoever but what the club want to do is avoid last summer if you remember last summer we were at what a couple hours from our first match against real sociedad in la liga depay eric garcia and aguero were not registered pk took a last second pay cut and then they all got registered the drama last summer was absolutely unreal and now joan laporta wants to prevent that he wants to give chavi absolutely you know tranquility calmness saying that look you don't have to worry about anything whatsoever we will get it done do not have to worry about it you don't have to think oh if loon does not register i'm going to play a batman up front if i can't get rafini i'm going to put them belly here that's what i have to hear if we can't get kese i put it you don't 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 have to worry about that we will get it all done and that's the plan for barcelona so we'll have to wait and see again the third lever we shouldn't you don't need to rush for it at the end of the day we need it before august the 12th which i think is the first day of la liga we need it before then it'll get done before then but again the club want to bring that in just to reassure that chavi has no problems and that the team next season can be all together and be fully fit ready to go to challenge for the upcoming season so that was my reaction to the barcelona news over the past 24 hours hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed the main thing on the first day of course is on the Jules Kunde operation. What do you think will happen? He joins Barcelona or will he join Chelsea? Secondly, on that Chelsea relationship, i.e. on Aspen Aquetta, do you believe we sign Jules Kunde that Aspen Aquetta and Alonso will not arrive? And would you so go for them despite the fact that Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel do not want to sell them? And third and finally, on the alternative backup options for Jules Kunde if we don't sign him, who would you go for? Pau Torres, Inigo Martinez, maybe even Carvalho, William Saliba, Ibanez from Roma. Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.